Swearing in prison is normal, standing over people, lying, I mean, bullying, intimidation, fear. And when you live in that, it becomes part of who you are. What's your process when, when guys come through your system to actually get them out of their own head and, and start to change the way they view themselves? Well, if a person believes a lie is the truth, that lie becomes their truth. So for us, we're all about truth. And, and I try to lead by example, not just in what I say, but what I think and what I share. Um, and I think that what's in the darkness, um, the enemy has access to what's in the darkness. There's a good, there's a bad, there's a light, there's a dark, there's a God, there's a devil. One says you're useless, one says you're a weed, you're no good, you're better off dead. You're always going to fail. The other one says, well, that's a lie. You love, you value, you can do anything you put your hand to. But you choose which one you listen to. And in life, we all face circumstances that we do and we don't create. And with every circumstance we face, we make a choice. And a lot of people make choices based upon not what they feel. Um, but you can't base on what you feel. You've got to try and base it on truth. You know? Truth brings life. And lies bring death. So it's helping to recognise between the life and the death, the good and the bad. Definitely. And, and in terms of getting people into like the right environment, how important is like support and environment with someone who's in that early stage? Uh, extremely so. It's about the culture. Um, it's really important that you develop a strong culture about what you're trying to um, achieve. I mean, in, in my houses, we have um, no lies, no gossiping, no, um, no roosters, everyone's a fluffy chicken, um, no swearing. And we cook, we clean, we don't treat women like chunks of meat. And we don't belittle somebody, we don't have people who don't get along. We just, we set a real strong culture. And when you come and live in that culture for one, six, 12 months, you change. Your thinking changes, your speech changes. And it's a bit like when you, if you put a person in prison, when you put a, a person in prison, you've got to learn to project an image that people perceive to fit in with where you are. And you conform to the environment that you're in. Swearing in prison is normal, standing over people in prison is normal, lying, I mean, bullying, intimidation, fear. That's normal. And when you live in that, it becomes part of who you are. Um, I've got a saying that you can take the prisoner out of prison, but then you've got to get the prisoner out of the prisoner. So when a person gets out of prison, they're still in prison because the whole culture and who they are and their values have changed. And so what we do is we try to change the values and change the culture and do that by changing the person. Okay. And do you, can you sort of tell when you, when you see a guy and he applies to your program whether you feel like they are actually ready to change and those yeah. that are not, can you sort of pick who you think will be successful? Yeah, I can, yeah. What, 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 do you, what nuance do you look for? Um, well, you class addiction in five categories, or not just addiction, um, but when a person needs help, you can class them in five categories. I say A, B, C, D, E, and there's three E's. We only take, say, the E1, and the E1 would be someone where Mum's had enough, grandma's had enough, wife, brother, sister. Um, all the options are closed and they're at a point where they say, I can't do it anymore. Basically, they're couch surfing. For them, the options are when they hit the brick wall and they come to the end of themselves, their options are prison, hospital, mental health hospital, morgue or rehab. Um, and so they're the ones we take into Shalom. If they have these options, whether it's a wife or their mum, um, we won't take them in until their parent or their wife does their part and then we can do ours so basically the, the e1 yeah okay okay so when they're on that last when they're at the end of themselves and the brain you hit the brick wall and you're searching for options and you go for each family member, all the doors are shut so it only leads with these five okay i see i saw from you one of your documentaries that when they come in all the guys you almost they almost have to create like a uniform way of doing things from their appearance to certain rules and regulations? Yeah, well, from the appearance side of it, it's like, from where I come from, um, a geek, a normal person, like, you know, you project an image that I perceive that you're normal. Um, and, but the people I feel, that I feel comfortable around, they're smoking cones, sticking picks in arms, sleeping around, doing crime, got mullets, top knots, mohawks. Um, that's what I feel comfortable around, so I'm trying to break that. So when they come into Shalom, um, it's not okay for them to have a mullet and a top knot and a mohawk. I mean, because uh, when you see them come in your house, you sort of hide your wallet or your purse or your, because they project an image you perceive they're, they're a bit dodgy. And so I just try to get them so they just look like oh, normal working class fellas, you mean. Mm, and and so can, we shave their heads, yeah. And because that can even, as they do improve and improve themselves and get better, if they don't change their appearance, they can get caught back into thinking they're 
back where they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and again, it's a culture that we're in, so we have a rule that's relevant for one person, it's relevant for every person. So um, if one person has to shave their head, they all shave their head. Yeah. Yeah, so just number two on the top, one on the sides, and Monday to Friday we work. Um, so we're fluoros and work boots and, and we just do normal stuff. Okay. How do you main, maintain culture? Um, learn it, teach it, delegate it. So yeah. I, I just disciple men to be men and women to be women. We've got what, 160 residents in Shillam at the moment, um, men, women, and women and kids. So we have three different programs. So yeah. again, it's maintaining the culture. Okay. Is the program mainly for men? No, it's uh, we've got just as many women now as we have men. So we have um, men, a men's program, a women's program, and then we also have women and children. So we have three three lots of programs. So okay. it's, it's evolved a lot over the last uh, uh, 13 years. Okay. Where are you looking to take it? I'm not taking it anywhere. I'm just getting up and taking one day at a time. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't, I don't look too far ahead. But, yeah, we're, we're, um, we're probably the largest one in Australia. 